Hi guys, back again. Uh, how are you lot doing? Hope you're well. It's good to catch up with a few of you on Thursday night at the uh, Youth Zoom. If you want to connect with that, let us know and I can get you the details for it. We're carrying on our series in Acts and uh, we're now getting to um, towards the end of well, the middle part of the section of, of chapter two. Um, we've looked at how um, in Acts, uh, Jesus went up to heaven and the apostles were told to basically continue the work of God. Uh, and then they went and waited and prayed and decided what to do. And then the Holy Spirit turned up and the Holy we, we left it last week where the Holy Spirit had turned up and um, it was a Pentecost. They were in Jerusalem and there's a few, or lots of people around from all over the place. And they're going, what's going on with these guys? They're speaking in tongues. They're speaking in the language of those people who were there and it was like what what is this and we learned about how that gift or all, all the holy spirit is given to further god's kingdom and um i'd love you just to carry on reading verse verse 22 uh, chapter 2 verse 22 um through to end of verse 41 and as you read that you will see that peter is stood amongst the crowd they have got their attention there are these guys some of them think they're drunk and they've said no they're not drunk it's nine o'clock in the morning. But these people are standing that stood there astonished and aghast. And they're listening to Peter. And Peter then speaks to them and he tells them about Jesus. He gives the whole gospel message there. And he quotes some sections, um, verses 20, 25 uh, through to 28. And to 28. He, t he, he speaks about King David. And he says in there, he gives signs of basically, they thought that King David was going to be the Messiah. And he's like, no, no this stuff spoken about was not about King David because King David is, is in a tomb somewhere in the city. He's dead. Actually, all of this stuff was written about Jesus. King David wrote this stuff, yes. And you thought he was writing about himself, but no, he wasn't. He was writing about this guy who you shoved up on a cross and you crucified and you killed him and those people will have known this as fact they will have known that Jesus had died they would have known that these guys were followers of Jesus and Peter tells them the truth of who Jesus is and what do they do verse 37 when the people heard this they were cut to the heart and they said to Peter and the other apostles brothers what shall we do they were cut to the heart. Why? Because they were told about who Jesus really was. He is Lord and Messiah. Have a look in there. It says, I need to look at my notes. Um, verse 36, it helps when I look. Therefore I tell all Israel, I accuse this, God has made this Jesus who you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Lord was a term they understood was this term of, of God, the creator Lord, the creator God. So, so Paul, Paul, Peter is saying, Lord is Jesus, is God. And then secondly, Messiah, the saviour, the person who's foretold in the Old Testament as coming back to make things right with God, that this Jesus not only was Lord, not only was God, but he was also the Messiah. He was sent from God to make things right and they thought the Messiah was going to come and get rid of the occupying Roman forces and Peter's there going no it's much much more than this it's saving us for our whole lives for eternity for all people who have ever lived we are to turn away from the world and turn to Jesus it's about a change he talks about what they said what should we do and he says repent and be baptised, repent, say sorry for the things you have done wrong. You are going in this direction, you need to do a 180 degree turn and look back to Jesus and have Jesus as your focus. You need to repent and then you need to be baptised. And it says that's what happens. And that's what should happen to us. If you have chosen to repent, if you've turned your life around to focus on Jesus, then you need to get baptised. And your churches may do it in different ways. When I got baptised, I got baptised. The tradition, I, I was in the church tradition I was in, they used a little bit of water. It was called communion. But it was a public thing of me saying, I have repented, I've turned my life around and I'm following Jesus. 
It was a public thing. There was the outward, but for me, it was called confirmation. As far as I'm, I be, I'm, I'm concerned, it's about an outward acknowledgement of Jesus as you, your Lord. And uh, the tradition I'm in now, the church I go to, uh, we baptise full immersion in a pool of water. And, and that's great because if I'm honest, that me getting a little bit of water has caused issues in the past because some, some Christians go, oh, you weren't properly baptised. I oh, know you can't say that. I disagree with that. I don't have a problem how much water there is, but if you get lots of water, go for it. If you get often a little water in your in your church tradition, fine. It's not about the quantity of water. It's about the outward. I am turning and I am doing this to follow Jesus. And we have the outward sign of being baptised with the water, but then we have the inward sign of the Holy Spirit in us, and we choose to follow Jesus, and we are filled with His Spirit. His spirit starts to change us and works at us from the inside out. And I've talked about that in the past. So we hear here that these guys were given the invite to repent and be baptised. And they did. And 3,000 were added. And it's all well and good telling people about Jesus. But you have to give them the opportunity to respond. And that response is, do you want to repent and be baptised? Do you want to follow Jesus? It's all well and good talking about Jesus and going on about Jesus. But there's a step to make. And that step is to say, yes, I choose to follow him. And as we found last, out last week, we were talking about the Holy Spirit and how he gives us the things to say and the things to do. We should do that. But we should always remember to say to people, do you want to follow Jesus? I, I, Mike Pilavachi, I've spoken about him many of times. Soul Cyber Church, right? Their Soul, Soul Cyber, the summer festivals, really blessed me. And I've seen them bless thousands and thousands of youth. And I'm so grateful that, that they've stepped out of it because God's told them to do that. But Mike Pilavachi, I'll always remember as a youth leader. One of the, one of the, lots of things he said that have stayed with me. But one of them was that him, he, he went to a, to, a, to a church somewhere, I don't know where it was. And they said, yeah, we'll have 400 kids here. And he started telling them about Jesus. And he realised really, really quickly that they all knew everything about Jesus. And he said, well, do you want to follow Jesus? And the whole place stood up. Now, I might be exaggerating here, but basically my, uh, my, my recollection of the story is that Mike then spoke to the youth leaders afterwards at this church. And, and they were like, oh, my days, we, we couldn't believe they all became Christians. And Mike was like, well, wh when did you ask them? And they were like, Oh, actually, we've, we've, we've never asked them. We've never given them the opportunity to become a Christian. You get an invite, you have to reply to it. You need to remember to offer your mates that invite. Do you want to come to church? More importantly, do you want to make that decision to follow Jesus? And I invite you guys now, those of you who don't know him, do you want to turn your life around and follow Jesus and put him at the centre? It will change the way you live. It's changed my life and my, my whole life is utterly different because of it. So if you do, please get in touch. I'd love to meet and pray with you. Um, but if you already know him, um, you're going through acts going, I need to be telling my friends. You need to give them that invite. And you guys know me. You'll see me at church regularly that I will say regularly, OK, if you want to become a Christian, come on. Let's say that prayer now. Let's do it now. Bow your heads, put your arms in the air or come up the front. It, like, I will give you opportunity and opportunity. Why? Because that's what it says in the Bible to do. Anyhow, uh, last session on Acts next week. Uh, but it's half term next week. So um, we are not, there won't be anything. I'm having a week off. I'm actually having the week after sort of a, a bit of half term week off. But um, not going to be videos that week. But the week after will be a final session in Acts. Um, See you guys later. Keep well. Have a good week. God bless.